Hello? Well, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday, November 5th, 2014 episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays. This is Eric Cook, and I'm with WSI Internet Consulting, where we work with businesses and organizations on helping them better understand and leverage the power of the Internet as a strategic business tool. You can learn more about me and WSI online at www.poweredbywsi.com. With me this week is my good friend and Free Webinar Wednesday partner, Mr. Jeff Simpkins. Jeff. Say hello to everybody out there in Free Webinar Wednesday world. Greetings, everybody. This is Jeff Simpkins. I'm with Community Bank Consulting, Inc. And you can learn more about me and Community Bank Consulting, Inc. online at www.communitybankconsulting.com. Excellent. So how's Jeff this fine week in November? Can you believe it's November already? I can't believe it's November. I'm sitting here looking out the window at Beautiful color, but uh, the pace at which the leaves are falling off the trees is picking up by the day. Yeah, well, uh, at least you still have leaves on your trees. I'm looking out and I'm seeing sticks and lots of leaves <laughs> on the ground. There's a little bit of work to be done in my yard, but uh, I guess that's sign of the times up here in Michigan, so <laughs> no big deal. Well, I am. Uh, I, I, I feel like I say this every week, but I think we've just had some really awesome guests on lately. But I'm I'm really excited. We're going to continue our market insights love fest um, because uh, we did a guerrilla marketing presentation earlier. But now we're going to bring back uh, market insights, and Joe Sullivan, the CEO of the company, is actually going to be. Uh, presenting today and talking about uh, purpose, passion, and profits. And I think, Jeff, you and I can kind of relate to what he's going to be talking about because we're both doing what we're passionate about and uh, definitely have a purpose. And uh, hopefully, of course, we probably always could use more profits, but that's what we're going to talk about. So before I officially pass the screen on to Joe, though, I just want to remind folks a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, today's session and all sessions for Free Webinar Wednesdays are recorded and made available at freewebinarwednesdays.com. So if there is something that Joe talks about that you'd like to go back and catch or maybe share the presentation with a friend or a colleague, feel free to do that. And then if you have a question and would like to interact with us today, please feel free to do that. We love hearing from you if you're uh, attending live, of course, and just use the chat feature, and Jeff and I will monitor those during today's presentation, and uh, we'll make sure we, uh, we get that over to Joe when we have a break in the action. So without further ado, I am going to work what I think will be some go-to-meeting magic, and we'll send it over to Joe and officially welcome you to Free Webinar Wednesdays, and uh, thank you for being with us. Eric and Jeff, so, thank you. It is my pleasure. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody can see the slides okay. Is that showing up? It is. You can hop right, right into presentation always... mode, and I think we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right. So uh, let me know if there's any tech issues on my end. You know, first of all, again, let me say thank you to you. And, and why is it? I've always been curious. Why is it that some people seem to have more fun in life, and some companies in like today's environment are thriving when others are not. And I think that some of the key ingredients of that, or two in particular that I want to talk about, are purpose and passion. And it is my belief, and we can prove this, that profit is not a strategic objective. Profit is a byproduct of having a clear and focused and up-to-date and relevant purpose for why you're in business, fueled by a team of people who are on fire with passion. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay out the agenda for today and kind of tell you what we're going to talk about. So um, we're going to get a little acquainted hey, here. Joe? Yes. Hey, Joe, why don't yes, you sir. go ahead and uh, down in the bottom left, click on your little presentation mode. You've got three little icons at the very bottom left-hand corner of your screen. We'll see if we can do that. You've got uh, yep, how about that one right there. Looks like a, looks like a screen or a projector screen. All right. Over. Bear with over. Me. Oh. That one right there. Ah, there, there we go. Okay. Now we got full screen. Now, you know, we're, now you, we're cooking with gas. <laughs> well, you guys, you know, there's a lot of things I do, and I talk a lot, but uh, the technology, well, I like you to have a sense of humor and all that one. So you're getting acquainted Absolutely. with me already, and one of my perhaps not strong suits is that I'm, I'm practicing from a new Mac, so I'm transitioning. 
So we're going to talk about um, you know, getting acquainted a little bit up to here. We're going to talk about some shifts in the marketplace. I'm going to talk about purpose and passion and the role that they play in profitability. We're going to talk about the role of purpose in organizational clarity and the role of passion in culture building. Now, a little bit about this crazy guy that's in front of you, a map of the United States. I started Market Insights in Chicago in 1993. Our work is in the banking and financial services sector, not-for-profit, and in small businesses. We're headquartered in Chicago. We opened an office in Seattle about six years ago, and I'm sitting, uh, you guys are talking about being in the Midwest or on the East Coast. I'm sitting in Seattle right now, sitting at my dining room table, albeit a little bit cloudy, staring at the Cascade Mountains. So it kind of works for me. Um, I'm a psychotherapist, a speaker, a blogger, a workshop facilitator, a self-professed coffee geek, um, a marathon runner, ran uh, Chicago, uh, what, three weeks ago now, and uh, a yoga instructor. So a little bit of everything there. Um, and, and a little can, bit about the company. I can tell you I've had the, pleasure of, I've had the pleasure of hearing Joe and also his colleague Jim speak on a number of occasions, and uh, whenever they do, the audience uh, is very, very receptive. So I know speaking to a monitor is much different than a live audience, so we appreciate you uh, kind of changing your presentation MO and joining us on the webinar today. Yeah, and well said. And I'm going to ask you guys um, questions. I'm going to ask you questions about you and your, and your purpose. And you may not have some immediate answers to these things, but I'll talk to you about how purpose individually connects back to the purpose for the business that you work in. And it doesn't matter if it's a small business or a consulting firm or a speaking firm or a bank or a credit union or what have you, the principles cross-apply. So a little bit about Market Insights on slide four and, and the work that we do. That's just a screenshot from our website. You can go there more. Suffice it to say this, it's about helping clients understand the market and the market situation better, database analysis and big data and branding and positioning and M&A work and strategic planning and all of that. So I wanted to just give you guys a little bit of context for that. Now, shareholder. We hear this way, you know, often, and as I'm sure you do, your business, your board of directors is coming to you saying, you know, how are we going to make money in the coming year? And again, it doesn't matter the industry. Profitability, or whatever you want to call it, shareholder value, bottom line, net interest margin, whatever it is, it is the elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen, but it is not the driver of the bus. It is the elephant in the room, but not the driver of the bus. Who's the driver of the bus? You are. Your team, your strategic focus, your passion, the things that bring your team and your business to life, these are the drivers of what makes it work going forward. And that is what we're here to talk about today. So again, regardless of the industry, think about the principles that I'm going to lay out and ask yourself, how do these apply to me, to my life, to my business, and where do I have a sense of purpose, and what is my passion? So they say, and Buckminster Fuller said this, he said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you build a new model that makes the old one obsolete. So what is it that we're facing? You know, new paths, uh, new paths to profit, understanding your market, understanding how things are shifting. So let's talk a little bit about a few businesses that are doing it differently. So slide seven here. Now, many of you have probably bought shoes from Zappos.com or bought a cliff bar when you were on an endurance event or been in an airport where you see the store called Life is Good and you can't get out of there without buying a coffee mug or a t-shirt or Van City Credit Union in the financial services sector up in Canada, again, doing things differently. But what do all of these companies or brands have in common, you might ask? You know, with Van City, it's about innovative ways to make positive outcomes for their members and their communities. With Life is Good, it's about spreading optimism. With the Cliff Bar, and I'm personally sick of those right now, by the way, after having ran the marathon, I'm on a little three-month vacation from Cliff Bars, because if you've ever done a biking event or a run or anything like that or a triathlete, you've probably eaten these things. But what they've done is they've created a healthy bar that isn't going to spike your blood sugar or destroy the planet in the process. So what they do is they make food that's good and makes the world a better place. And Zappos, finally, if you've ever bought shoes there, they're not a shoe company. They're not an Internet company. They're in the business to surprise and delight you as a customer and to deliver happiness. So the common things that all these four iconic businesses have in common is they have a purpose. 
they have something, an underlying motive, a mechanism, something that drives their decisions, their commitments, their hiring practice, their brand promise, their marketing expenditures. They have something under the hood that makes it all work. Now, speaking of industries, now this uh, slide eight happens to be about new challenges and priorities. And while this article was written from the perspective of financial services, take a look at what they're talking about here. Customer loyalty and how that's harder to find. Regulatory pressures. Digitization is blurring the boundaries between industry. When I can bank with, uh, and I can use Apple Pay and I can use a variety of things like that, the, the industry in which we operate or do business in is blurring and finally product innovation. And again, what I believe is again, regardless of the industry you're in, this is kind of what you're facing in terms of, of loyalty. So how do we go deeper? Again, we acknowledge loyalty, regulation, digitization, and so forth. So whether you're selling coffee, consulting, speaking, or providing banking services, these are some of the things you're up against. So let's take a look at the new world that's out there. Many, many different things. Let's take demographics as an example. And I put a few icons up there. We know that, again, depending on the, the part of the country we're working in, we have seen a rather inconsistent economic recovery. What's going on in Michigan, where, where perhaps Eric is located, versus where Jeff is located in North Carolina, or me in Seattle, or somebody else in San Diego, it's all different. But what we know are the demographics of our market are shifting, as an example. We know that an aging population, we know that urbanization and people moving away from rural communities and going toward urban is more common and much more prevalent these days. We know that Generation Y, people under the age of roughly 34 today, are the dominant people in the workforce. And what are they looking for in companies that they work for, in brands that they engage, and businesses that they want to buy from? They want to know what that business is about. They want to know what the purpose and the social value of that business is and why should I work there and what's the mission underneath it all. So the demographics really do influence what's going on and why purpose in a business is so important. So again, you know, a lot of different trends out there with consolidation in the industry, the quest for scale, not just in banking but other businesses, the quest to do more with less the pressure at things becoming commoditized says this. Why should I do business with your company as opposed to someone else? What makes you different from someone else? And part of that, again, is the purpose for being in business. So, again, many of you probably log on to Facebook and you have an iTunes account and you have Google Plus and things like that. And we know that in the banking sector, for you banks in the audience or credit unions, we know that the face of competition is changing. But what it, it says for all of us that from our company standpoint, we've got to have an underlying reason for business that resonates emotionally with the customers that we do business with. So Mark Twain said it best on slide 11. He said, the two most important days in your life are the day that you were born and the day that you discover the reason why. So again, I will start to ask you why. And I'm going to start to ask you as we start to go more into purpose what is your purpose and why are you here and how does this connect to the business? How do you apply your purpose in your daily life and a variety of other things that I'll periodically ask you along the way and invite you to think about and perhaps write down some things. So what is purpose? I'm fascinated with the idea of what makes people tick and why people are around. So I want you to think for a minute. Maybe you have a grandparent, a grandmother, a grandfather who worked his or her entire life and then retired and then what happened? Well, they started getting sick, and, and all of a sudden, they died. And that's an over-exaggeration. But we do know that in this country, the average Social Security recipient collects Social Security for an average of 13 months. So there is a shift in demographics. But what we do know is that people that have a purpose, a reason to get up every day, a reason for being, live longer, are happier, and are healthier. And if you look at people who are centenarians, people who have been around for 100 years or so, um, what do they have in common? Yeah, they probably eat a lot of uh, Mediterranean diet with olive oil. They go for a walk every day or exercise. They're engaged in community and they read, but they're engaged in things that have a purpose. So me personally, and I'm going to ask Jeff and Eric in a few minutes about their purpose, but, you know, I have a lot of them. And, and, you know, one of them is just to live life and do it on my own terms. So when I started Market Insights at the end of 93 and left my big cushy corporate America job, everybody said, no, no, you can't do that. That's the wrong thing. You should never just quit your job and, 
So I did what I always do. I did it on my own terms and I blissfully ignored them and it's kind of been a strategy that's worked really well for me. Uh, the thing about purpose is that it can be whatever you declare it to be and it doesn't need to be this big bold thing. It's just unique to you. So what I've laid out on slide 13 are a few ideas about purpose. Your purpose is, as I mentioned, that thing that keeps you alive, engaged, and vital. It doesn't require somebody, some company, some individual from the outside to tell you individually what your purpose is. Your purpose can be whatever you declare it to be. I had a friend when I asked him this recently and he said, my purpose every day is to get up and enjoy my life to the fullest that day. That is his purpose. It doesn't need to be grand. It doesn't need to be bold. It just needs to be yours. It doesn't require somebody from the outside to tell you that it's right. It's unique to you, it's your own expression, and it doesn't mean that someone else is not gonna have a similar purpose, but the way you express it, the way you show up to the world, the way you bring that to your job and your company is unique to you. And so, you know, I'm gonna ask you in a few minutes really about that. And I asked, um, I asked a client of ours the other day, I was facilitating a retreat here in the Seattle area, and I asked um, a group of people in a planning meeting about their purpose. And one of the, the, the senior people came up and said, my purpose is to fight injustice in the world. And that became the filter through which how she evaluates where she spends her time, what social causes she gives to, the things that her business get involved with, and so forth. Again, whatever you declare it to be. But it is a filter. So some of you in the audience may have children. And maybe one of your purposes is to live life to the fullest, but to give my kids the best start I can. And that might translate into something simple as, which neighborhood do we buy a house in that has a really good school district? So if you think about that, if, if you're trying to launch the best start for your kids possible, it's going to result in your filter of decisions like that. Which house do we buy in which neighborhood, in which school district, and a variety of things like that. So knowing your purpose is the filter through which you evaluate all of your decisions. It becomes a barometer. Now, some of you might be saying, I have no idea what my purpose is, and that's okay. It's important first to ask the question, but you can pick a purpose for today, and even just for the next 35 or 40 minutes that we're on this call, to say my purpose is to learn one new idea, and to learn that here in this webinar, and maybe to learn one new thing every day and share that with someone else. Again, you can make this fun. So purpose, many times, let me tell you that by way of a story, maybe it's better. So in a recent workshop I did in the Midwest, a man came up to me and he said, you know what, I've always wanted to do some of the things you're doing. I've always wanted to be a motivational speaker. And I'm an accountant and I, I work for some firm and I'm bored and I'm not challenged and I want to be a motivational speaker because I think that, uh, you know, getting people out hiking and biking, I want to talk about things outdoors. And he said, you know what, I've almost got all my ducks in a row. My mortgage will be paid off in five years. My kids will be out of the house in seven years, and then I'll do it. Then I'll become a motivational speaker. And what I'm saying here, ladies and gentlemen, is you have to flip the trip. You know, in this example on slide 15, I say something like, once I have money, then I'll be independent. No, we need to flip the trip and say, once I'm independent, then I'll have money. Once I have more time, then I'll relax. Well, no. Once I relax, then I'll have more time. So the message here is that if you think you have a purpose and you're pretty clear on what it is or you have an idea for your purpose for today, take action, stop procrastinating because you cannot wait. Your life, your purpose, your vocation is about running toward your purpose. Now, speaking of purpose, I'm gonna put three high profile examples up here. Three photos on the screen, you probably know most of them, if not all of them, on the left, is a man named Tony Shea, who again, kind of reinvented Zappos shoes. I think you know Oprah in the middle, and I'm guessing that you know Mark Zuckerberg or Zuckerberg on the right. Now, Tony Shea is an example. I saw him speak here in Seattle at a, a, a meeting a couple of years back, and he brought in the happiness bus. So what has this guy done? You know, he, he developed a company called LinkedIn Exchange. He sold it to Microsoft. But what he did is he took over Zappos with annual sales of 1.6 million people and he grew it to a billion dollars with inside of 10 years. And he said, our purpose is not to sell shoes. We're not in the internet business. We are here to surprise and delight our customers and to bring happiness to their life. And he said, that is the mission that we have. 
that is the purpose for why we're in business. We happen to allow people to buy shoes and things like that on the Internet, but that is not why we are here. And, you know, the other thing is Oprah, as an example. Now, everybody knows Oprah, and if you're in the Chicago area or anywhere close, some people have a little Oprah weariness because they, they've seen so much of her over the last But she does good things. A young woman who grew up in rural Mississippi to less than modest means, who grew up to be a voice for women and young girls worldwide in starting schools and things like that. Next thing, Mark Zuckerberg. And again, we all know what he's done. But he said in one of the, the articles that I read about him, even recently, as he said, I want to connect the world. I want to give people a chance to dialogue and share their opinion and connect with others of like mind. But you might say, all right, these are high-profile examples. I'm just John or Mary, you know, living and working and doing my job in my corner of the universe and my corner of the United States or the world for that matter. What do all these people have in common? Each of them parlayed a personal purpose and a personal passion into a professional endeavor and gave 100% of them or more into the endeavor. So grand in scale, sure, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, there's very little barrier in these three examples, and in many of us here on this call today, probably between our personal and our professional life. But my message to you here is it doesn't need to be big and bold like a Tony Shea or an Oprah or a Mark Zuckerberg. It just needs to be yours. So now I'm going to ask you some personal questions. And, and Jeff and Eric, and if I can invite you to participate in this, I want to ask you uh, each one question. If you have an answer, please share it with the audience. What is your purpose in your life? Not your business, but your life. I'm going to make Jeff go first because I always <laughs> talk first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeff, do you have an answer for that? I actually do. Um, I wrote this back in 1997, and it's, I keep it nearby all of the time. And uh, it's particularly helpful when I feel like I'm off track. Okay. And uh, I refer to it as my vision. Okay. And my vision is I am committed to living honestly, keeping balance between professional career, personal relationships, and personal interests. Remembering that every minute of every day, I'm responsible for my own experience. I enjoy and protect my mind, my body, and my spirit. I accept risk as an opportunity to grow. All I have to give and receive is love, and the love I leave behind is all that matters. And I think that last statement is really what ties it together. Um, I like to say, professionally, I like to find work that feels like play, and what I mean by that is doing things that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. and tying that back into all I have to give and receive in love is really helping other people find their strength and their greatness, helping them to find a path that they can achieve things that they never thought they could do. So Jeff, does that, and, and, I, and I know the answer to this already because you said it periodically through here, but um, I'm going to summarize this down to one word at the end. I'm going to say love and how you express that and you show that to, world, to the world personally or professionally. Is that fair? Absolutely. So speaking of that, I mean, does this apply in your daily life? Can you think like every day you get up and you remember that and say, I'm conscious of where I apply this in my daily life? Um, you know, one, I would like to say that every minute of every day, I feel like I'm 100% successful at it. To be totally honest, there are times that I forget. And when I forget and get off track, you know, that's when my life really feels like it's out of balance. And we all get off track. You know, we, we live in this crazy westernized world that we live in, but it sounds like, okay, you, you can catch yourself and say, oop, that's kind of out of alignment with where I'm headed. I make a course correction for this day or this moment. You know, guess what? We're welcome. We're, we're human. We all do that. We've got to manage this thing called life in the meantime while we're trying to figure it out. Um, does it connect back to your job? Uh, it connects to everything in my life, my job, my exactly. relationships. Um, if I'm sitting on an airplane, <laughs> it connects uh -huh. to talking to the person beside me. It's Yeah, it connects to I hear you. Well, and Jeff, thank you for that because um, I am guessing that many in our audience might have some similar thoughts as to what you just shared. 
Um, but a great example, again, I think that we in the Western world, we have what we call, now take balance aside, because balance is great, and I'm a Libra and I don't have much of that, but, um, but the work-life balance, the, the personal and professional, there are, you know, you, you run your own company, you bring that to work every day, and so that is an expression of who you are, am I correct? Yes. Okay, great. Jeff, uh, or I'm sorry, thank you, Jeff. Eric, do you want to weigh in? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to say? We know the answer to that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I gotta go <laughs> you know Eric you. pretty well, don't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to get a tissue after Jeff's little tearjerker there. That was beautiful. That be in a we can get the violin out or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, to, to Jeff's credit, um, you know, I know he, it doesn't surprise me, and that's why I wanted Jeff to go first, in all honesty, because I know Jeff probably spends more time. Uh, some of our earlier shows in free webinar Wednesdays, we had a lot of discussion around personal coach and vision statements, and I know mm -hmm. Jeff spends a lot of time doing that. So I am not surprised nor disappointed in the completeness and utter awesomeness of Jeff's little vision statement. So I, I wish I had something cooler than that. Um, but one of the mantras that I tend to live by because I walked away from a nice cushy bank job and decided to jump out and do my own thing is uh, uh, doing what you like is freedom, but liking what you do is happiness. And That's great. you may laugh. Um, that actually is written on a um, fortune cookie piece of paper that I got uh -huh. taped to my monitor. So while Jeff has a very long and involved vision statement that he probably took a long time to craft, uh, I opened a fortune cookie and said, damn, that sounds pretty good. But, yeah. Um, and, but, you know, and that's, that is great because, you know, for our audience here today, you might say, oh, I don't have an elaborate mission statement. Well, neither does Joe Sullivan, your presenter here. I'm just like, I try to just show up every day but to live and do life my way. And, and whether you're about love, whether you're about – the freedom aspect. For any of you in this audience today, I just want to say in some case, cases, again, if you're wondering if I'm not clear what my purpose is, that is perfectly normal. And just having this kind of dialogue and asking these kinds of questions, something will pop up. It might be next week. It might be tomorrow. It might be at dinner tonight. It's all okay. Um, and you can have a purpose just for today. You can practice that and see how that works. But the point in this discussion is to say, you know, it really is woven into our professional lives as well. And, and there is a blurring in some way of personal and professional in that we bring our passion and our purpose to the work that we do. So I want to move on and talk a little bit about, on slide 18, about purpose in the business world. Now, about three years ago, I ran a, across an article, and it was about the Four Seasons Hotel chain. And it was, um, they talked about their experience headed into the Great Recession. So late, late 07, early 08, they said, you know what? We are a luxury hotel brand. We don't have a room price even at that point that was under $400 a night. We're going into a bumpy economy, and if we don't get clear, we're going to have a problem. So this article was written about the idea of the power of collective ambition. And the idea here is that purpose is at the center of everything. And what the, the CEO was quoted in here saying is he said, every day we have 34,000 employees who get up every morning thinking, how do we serve guests better today than we did yesterday? And their purpose that drives everything is to create simply the world's best hospitality experiences. And what that does is it influences their brand and their brand promise. It influences their corporate vision. It influences their corporate values. It inc inc influences, excuse me, their strategic and operational priorities. And then that black circle you see around the outside, it influences everything that we do in terms of hiring and motivating our team and cultivating a sense of culture. So it starts with what the purpose is. And many businesses, you know, they don't have the luxury of like, they're just doing what they do every day and they have a set of core values and a vision. And what I'm getting at is that Purposes change over time, and I want you to ask yourself the question, and again, if you even know of this brand, something called Kodak over in upstate New York. There was this brand called Kodak, and of course, many of you know it, but let me just hypothetically ask the question, or, or of our organizers here today, did Kodak lose sight of its purpose? Jeff, what do you think about that? 
Well, I think the fact that they barely exist today as compared to, say, 1980 indicates absolutely they did. Yeah. And so my point in, in corporate America or corporate world, depending on where you're calling in from, is that purpose is something that is constantly revisited. So just like personally how we can have more than one and it can change, um, so too must our purpose for our business be in alignment. So it's got to be current, hey, it's got to be connected, and so forth. Yeah, so, Joe. Yes. Joe. Yeah, yes. Maybe uh, a chicken and the egg comment on that, but I think one could also argue that maybe Kodak didn't lose sight of its purpose, but it didn't realize that its purpose had evolved and its purpose of creating an easy way for people to take pictures and have them automatically print on a camera or producing film that helps capture life's moments could have been their purpose and they focused on that, but they didn't realize that they were driving off of a cliff or that the road was a dead end. Perhaps they didn't evolve it. And, and again, you know, the Kodak moment that we all use generically to use those word, they probably didn't, you know, stand behind that. But what they also, they ignored the signs of the marketplace. And so I mentioned early right. on in this presentation, just talking about generation Y and things like that. But we have to understand our own marketplace and any business that we're in, it doesn't matter what kind of business again on this call. And you've heard me say that we have to look at where the trajectory of our markets, our competitive landscape, the digitization, consumer behaviors is changing what we do. And so Jeff, that's, uh, or Eric, that's a really good comment that you say, because um, it is all true. And part of our job as leader of any business is to stay in touch with where things are headed. So I want to tell you about a guy named Simon Sinek on slide 19. And I, um, uh, he's very popular, you know, in the TED Talk realm. And, and he had a great talk here in Seattle a few years ago. And he said, you know what? He said, if I ask most people at your company, you know, what it is that you do, most of them will say, yeah, you know, we, we serve coffee, we provide banking services or mortgages or we sell cars or, and, and even some of the people on your team might even know how, but very few people know why. And he said, the goal is to do business with people who think like you do. And he said, by the way, great leaders think and act alike. The total exact opposite way of everyone else because they think great leaders think from the inside out not from the inside from the outside in so start with why and and as you get into the purpose for your business you start with why and I'm going to show you three very different examples of why and companies with purpose and some are big and some are small so I'm going to bring you to slide 20 a company here in Seattle called sip and ship and Diana and Steve Naramore, friends of mine that I do yoga with and do hot hatha yoga in a 108 degree room and all that stuff, they have this wild little, wildly successful business called Sip and Ship. They are strategically located with Starbucks pretty much on one side of them and a FedEx um, office Kinko store or whatever it's now called, FedEx office on the other side. And I said to Diana and Steve, I said, you know, why? And they said, well, Number one is, you know, we're raising three young boys and we want to have some work-life flexibility. We want to own and control our own destiny. That's one of the reasons why we started this company. Number two is, you know, we want to teach our kids about entrepreneurship. We want to teach our kids that it is possible to do what you want to do if you work really hard. And three, they saw a window of opportunity in the market. And so they're at a couple of Seattle area neighborhoods. They saw where they could do something that Starbucks couldn't they saw where they could do something that a UPS store or a FedEx store couldn't, but their philosophy is that there is nothing that we say no to. It's instead, let me see what I can do. But the purpose and underlying business is everyone who works for them is a college student, young people. So their parents, not only to their three young boys, but to these young college students that work there. And they create an environment where both of these entrepreneurs express their passion and in so they have filled a niche in the market. They have taught kids about entrepreneurship. They have created jobs for young kids in college and given people in the community a different option than going to a national publicly traded company. And that's not bad. It's just different. And it is their expression of purpose. Another example for you. 
There's a man on slide 21 here. His name is Tony DiVittorio. I met Tony when we started psychology school together because I think I might have forgot to tell you I'm also a psychotherapist in addition to all this other stuff. And Tony um, uh, grew up on the south side of Chicago. He um, had a, a less than great child upbringing, or upbringing, I should say, and his dad would generally pretty much use him as a punching bag throughout his younger years to take out his own frustrations about his own life. So that kind of wasn't working very well for Tony. And so when I met Tony, he had a two-year-old son, and he said, you know, I'm really concerned that I'll screw this up. But he said also what I see is he said the Bridgeport neighborhood that I grew up in that is far more gentrified and different now, it's a rough place. It's half Hispanic. Um, it's half African-American. There's gangs and there's things like that. And he said what he saw is that there's a high incidence of violence, of high school dropout. So what he did is he created a program called BAM, Becoming a Man. And it is basically an after-school violence intervention program to keep young boys between grade 7 and grade 12 off the streets, doing productive stuff, sharing in sports, staying in school. And what he did is he used the experience of a crappy upbringing as a kid to mentor and teach these young men about what is important and basically helping these adolescent young men stay in school. Is it working? They brought it into one high school in Chicago. It is now in 40 high schools. The statistics prove that graduation rates are up 10 to 23%. Violent crime arrests are down 44%. Weapons crime and vandalism are down 36%. And in the 2015 to 2016 school year, they will mentor 3,800 students through this program. So your idea, whatever your expression of your purpose, bring it to the world. Do not wait till it is perfect because sometimes perfection is the enemy of the good. You just have to get it out there because all you have to do is take the first step. And as Tony said, I create a world where father and son live in harmony by mentoring youth into mon young men of character. And this has created the purpose in his life and has helped thousands of other students along the way. And let's take a banking example. So you might think, well, that's great for the people who run a sip and ship or becoming a man, but what about more conventional business? So let's talk about a bank headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio, by the name of Fifth Third. Now, Fifth Third, uh, beyond its funny name, has its branches in primarily, I think, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, and to throw in one for good measure, Florida. Well, the last few years have not been very good ones for Fifth Third Bank because they're in markets disproportionately hit economically by the recession. So what they did is they took a look at, at their mortgage portfolio and, and who's behind in mortgage payments. And what they did, of course, is they correlated that with a sampling of people who are behind in their mortgage payments. There were also unemployed for a minimum of six months. So what they did is they said, what if we help people find a job? If we help people find a job, then they're going to be able to stay current on their mortgages and everybody wins. So it's a win-win for the bank. It's a win-win for the customer. So what they did is they partnered with a team in Oregon to help people find a job. And I can't remember the name of the company. But what it did is it took a sampling of their unemployed customers. It brought them through job coaching and training, helped them build a resume, helped them create a 30-second promotional video, and they used social media and Twitter to get this out there. And so for every 53rd person that tweeted something about, say, Bill, in this example here, they would add another per person to the program. So what Fifth Third done, they have found their purpose almost by looking at the market and recognizing that we have a business situation that isn't good. It's not good for our customers. It's not good for us. We need to do something. And in so, Fifth Third found its voice. Fifth Third found a new purpose. And so purpose is infused with businesses that are in line for the trajectory of where our world is headed, not where it has been. So I want you to think about this. If you're sitting there in the audience today or, and having lunch, perhaps staring at the computer screen, you know, I want you to ask, you know, what's the purpose for our business? And is it in line with, with where we're headed? And so why do we exist? You know, we as humans, um, what do we do? What core human need does our business fulfill? So I'm going to just throw this out to our organizers here again and say, if either of you want to weigh in, and if you don't, that's okay too, just say so. But what's the purpose for my business? 
Jeff. Do you want me to go first this time? I've got an easy answer for this one. All right, Jeff, what's your easy answer? That's Eric. No, this is Eric. This is oh, Eric. Okay. Um, you know, what I said at the very beginning, you know, helping businesses and organizations better understand and leverage the power of the Internet as a strategic Great. business tool. I think that's, Great. Um, that really sums it up for what I do. And you guys listening in today, I'm not providing a commercial for any of us here, but I am inviting you to look at the fact that there is something under the hood that is driving Eric and his business. There's something that's driving Eric, or excuse me, and Jeff and his and, and Joe's and mine. Uh, Jeff, do you want to weigh in? Anything you want to say? Uh, you, you don't have to if you don't want to. That's fine. No, I don't mind at all. You know, the real driving force behind my business is making life easier for those that we touch. Great. And I would say, and and and, and from Market Insights' perspective, uh, you know, one of the other things that I think I have in my path as a psychotherapist and all the other things that I do is to help people grow and it's help organizations grow. And what that might mean is, you know, how do we make the team more efficient and in line and productive and do we understand our market so there are underlying principles so for those of you listening in today and participating I just want you to ask yourself a few key questions and you might have to take these back to your office and say why do we exist today what core human need do we fulfill in the marketplace all right now I have put a Venn diagram up there the next exercise I want you to think of one word alignment and the Venn diagram basically says that there's an overlap in the circles and maybe the black circle on the right is your organization and the green circle on the left is you personally and there is an overlap of purpose and where you can find purpose in the work that you do and say you know one of my purposes is we have this banker her name is Connie and she said I'm, I'm out here to teach my young daughters how to be fearless and how to take bold moves and say that if they want to be president of the United States, they can be president of the United States or secretary of state or whatever they want to be. But I want to set a good example and I want to help nurture this younger generation. And I said to Connie, I said, do you do this in your work? And she said, absolutely, every day in my young lenders who work for me in the commercial lending team, in my clients that I work with. So she was able to see how she can take her purpose from being a mom and being this great role model and that it applies to the work setting. And sometimes that overlap is bigger and sometimes it's smaller. And that's sometimes why, you know, somebody might decide to leave your company or join your company because they feel aligned with where you're going. And time and time again, I hear clients say to us, we want to attract a younger set of people to come work for us or we want to attract younger customers. Well, you have to start with what do you stand for? What's your purpose? And do people feel aligned with it? So the concept of alignment and whether we like this or are aware of this or not, we are constantly as human beings seeking out and looking for alignment with people who, who think like us and, and value what we value and all of that. So there's always overlap. Now, passion. Passion is something that just fascinates me. And if you walk away from this, or, this uh, time here today with nothing else other than this, life is all about passion and energy. We are drawn to people, to companies, to causes, to philosophies that rev us up, that excite us, and we don't even know why sometimes, but we want to bank with that bank, buy from that coffee shop, be with this person. It's all about passion and energy. So Tony Shea from Zappo Shoes, the man I talked about earlier, he said, you know what? He said, I read all this psychobabble mumble jumbo about you know, you should never bring your personal photos to the office and always have your cubicle look completely sanitized because when customers come in, you know, they really shouldn't see who you are and all that. He said, I think that's, well, I won't, use the, I won't use the exact word that he said, but he said, I don't think that's any good. He said, because when I start telling you, my team of people, to start editing out who you are, don't bring your photo to the office. If you ran a 5K over the weekend, oh, don't bring that metal in and don't talk about that stuff. He said, if I start having you edit out what you're passionate about, you will not bring 100% of yourself to the team. So he said, bring it all. Bring your dog to work. Bring your marathon medals. Bring your favorite coffee. Bring your recipes. But show us who you are and show up with all the, the passion and the excitement that you would personally bring it to the office. It is welcome here. So put another way, the gentleman from SAS Corporation, you know, a business analytics leader, 
said, 95% of my assets drive out of the gate every evening. And he said, it's my job to maintain a work environment that keeps these people coming back every morning. The creativity they bring to this company is our competitive advantage. So he views keeping the passion alive among his team as one of his number one priorities. And it seems to be working because year in and year out, they seem to be on or close to the 100 best companies to work for. And there's got to be something to that. Now, call passion whatever you want to call it. Call it enthusiasm or zeal or excitement or fervor, infatuation, whatever it is. And I know you're thinking, you know, you might be thinking, I have no idea what I'm passionate about. Or I'm passionate about too many things, I can't pick one. Just pick one. It doesn't matter. According to a man named Neil Mann, no pun intended, um, he said, you know, passion isn't about owning things or having money. It isn't about beating your competitor out or even having dominant market share. Passion is about moving toward your purpose. Now, if I were to ask you what you're passionate about, and I will, you know, there's a lot of things that you might be passionate about, but I want to just say a couple things first. Passion is a call to action. When you do what you are passionate about, the first thing, just identify one thing. It revs you up. It gets you excited. Act on it and then transfer it. Put it another way. American Express, um, again, credit card company, they, they did something called the Passion Project. And the Passion Project is this fascinating study at helping their customers who are card holders with them, encouraging them to live and express their passion. So you go to the website or you Google and you look at that hashtag, whatever you do, find the passion project. And they're about engaging content. And they profiled a woman named Veronica Scott on empowering Detroit. And this woman saw 20,000 homeless people in Detroit. They need coats. They need food. And I'm going to speed ahead and just kind of get to the punchline here. But what she did is she created a garment that was a winter coat and a sleeping bag all in one and an over-the-shoulder bag, a multi-purpose bag. She has branched out into not only helping people feel warm and giving them someplace warm to sleep, but helping them find a job by making these particular sleeping bags. But the point that she said about American Express is she goes, American Express saw what I was trying to do. They viewed it as important. They helped me with it, and they believe in me, and they believe in my city. Do you think that she is a loyal American Express follower? I would say absolutely that she is. So what are you passionate about? I want you to just think about one thing you're passionate about. And I'm going to ask both of our organizers here, and you got like five seconds to answer it. Eric, give me one thing you're passionate about. Cycling. All right. Jeff, one thing you're passionate about. My dogs. Your dogs. For me, it's coffee or running. And what I'm saying about passion is that now you just, no matter you what it, it is, do it. <laughs> If you've had a bad day, if you've had a really tough day, go out and cycle, go spend time with your dog, go drink coffee, whatever it is that you do, go for a run, because in so doing, you will wake up the energy in your body, and you can transfer that energy to other parts of your life, to the PTA meeting, to the neighborhood block party that you don't want to go to, to the tough business conversation that you have to have with a colleague, to the client that you have to say, we can't help you, or we can help you, or whatever it is, but you wake up that energy by doing something you are passionate about. Now, at the risk of sounding a little bit narcissistic here, yours truly on slide 30 here, I'm going to show you, but I'm going to tell you a story behind why I'm telling you this. <clears throat> so that was me at the finish line or, or standing in front of the Buckingham Fountain on October 12, 2014, for so like three and a half weeks ago, finishing my medal. And believe me, it was not a fast marathon. It was like five hours and 40 minutes. But you know what? It's a metaphor for life. In one five and a half hour journey, I get to experience everything. Pain, frustration, being entirely ticked off, elation, accomplishment, or whatever. So I ran a little, you know, I have other passions up there of Seattle and coffee and Germany and everything else. But here's what I learned about passion is that you got to tell people about it. And I found out that like when I first start running for charity that I, oh, I better not tell anybody because what if I don't finish then nobody will know. And you got to stop thinking small. You can't not tell people things. But what I found out is that a banker or another client would call me up and say, you know what, Joe, I was so intrigued by what you were doing of running this marathon and raising money for charity that I signed up for a 5K. I, I joined a gym. So my point is that sometimes just by living our passion 
and telling people about it or demonstrating it, we give other people permission to do the same. So what I ask you is, can you do that? By putting yourself out there, ask your customers what they're passionate about. Ask your colleagues what they're passionate about. And I think you will be surprised at the smile that comes on their face and the heart which opens. Now, speaking of an open heart, there's always that tension in the world that we live in. You know, we live in this busy westernized world, and as Superman, he had his kryptonite. Well, what's yours? Because what I want you to do is manage that. It's like, Jeff, what you said early on in the day, sometimes I get a little off track, and i got to bring myself back. We all do. Welcome to our world that we live in. But whether it's denial, so whether uh, we had a client, she wanted to jump out of an airplane and skydive, and she kept denying that she wanted to do it. And all it was doing was draining her energy. Kodak denied where the world was headed. The last thing I want you to do is to live personally or professionally with regret. Gee, I wish we had done this. Or comparing ourselves to others. Or the ought to's. Or what I call the big one for me anyway is fear. This is no longer. We no longer live in a world where, believe me, the, the idea of fear is seductive. It's the media loves it. They love to scare you. Don't buy in because all it's going to do is drain your energy. It's going to drain your passion. It's going to drain the creativity that you have to come up with the most unique, great business solution at your business or your bank or your consulting firm or whatever it is that you do. So do not let fear drain your passion. So if you want, just write something down on the paper that is your drain. Write it on a piece of paper and then rip it up into shreds and flush it down the drain when you're done with this call. Um, so write it down. And I want to just recall something I saw Jim Carrey, the comedian, say. And he said, never let fear drain your playful heart. And I think we all probably agree that guy has a playful heart. But I think that's a really great piece of advice. Now, profit. What I've attempted to do in our time here today is to say that profit is not a strategic objective. Profit is a byproduct of having a clear and focused and relevant and up-to-date purpose and focusing on passion and team and people and cultivating their passion. So even if you do nothing else but ask everyone that works in your department or at your office what they're passionate about, you start to wake up the energy, you break down the barriers between people and so forth. And what we've also learned, and when I do this, I do this retreat and this kind of thing all over the country with all types of clients, and generally what I find is that there are many common threads. So there might be many different passions and many different purposes. There are a lot of common purposes and a lot of common passions and a, common, a lot of common roadblocks that maybe you can help each other work through. So as diverse as we all are, we are all woven together. Now, you think this doesn't work and you're still not convinced? Fortune Companies on Fortune's 100 companies, best companies to work for, posted stock prices that rose an average of 11.8% between 98 and 2013 compared with 6% for everyone else. So focusing on purpose and passion and workplace and culture and people does indeed lead to profit. So as I mentioned early on, profit is, you know, again, it, it is important. Obviously, it runs our business. Um, but it is not the driver of the bus. So next thing, I want you to take out a blank piece of paper. Oh, I think I have one more thing first. Remembering that, of course, it's a marathon and not a sprint. So if you're thinking about changing a departmental practice, if you're thinking about launching a new product or service, if you're thinking about uh, redesigning your website, or if you're thinking about taking a motivational trip to Europe or running a marathon or swimming the English Channel, it all starts with one step. Don't scare yourself with the overall goal. I will tell you the marathon metaphor. A friend of mine said to me in metaphors in marathon, I view the marathon as 26 individual one-mile runs. And I thought, I can do that. And so can you. So it is a marathon, not a sprint. So now it's time for you to take out a piece of paper, and I want you to draw a horizontal line. And that horizontal line is what I call your lifeline. And on the left side of that line is the day you were born, and on the right side of that line is the day you are going to die. Now, you might think, wow, this is really creepy, and perhaps it is. But remembering, now what I want you to do is I want you to draw a vertical line that bisects that horizontal line on where you think you are, you personally, not your business, in the lifeline. 
Are you toward the beginning? Are you toward the end? So just think about that for a minute. So now that you've drawn the vertical, the, the vertical line bisecting the horizontal line, I want you to ask yourself, are you doing what you want to do? Are you getting out there and doing it? Because as Steve Jobs said in his Stanford University graduate speech, or it's a speech to the graduating class, he said, remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking that you have something to lose in the first place. So with that, I, I want to say thank you. And we've tried to help you kind of get a handle on some of the principles of driving profit in the new economy, built primarily around purpose and passion. But I want to just check in with our organizers and see if there's any questions or anything else that, that people want to say before we wrap up. Awesome. So Eric, anything, um, anything uh, come up? Um, other than your colleague heckling you in the chat window, <laughs> of course. Yeah, well, you know, you, you can, we do have a little fun. You can have a separate conversation with Jim when you yeah. get back to the office. So I'll, I'll let right. you take care of that. Um, so it's, it's with that, Eric, what I for Jeff and I, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, with that, I will say, um, feel free to reach out to me. I know that some of this stuff is pretty personal. I put my Twitter handle at the bottom and my email on the slides. And if this is something that's resonating with you and your life and your company, reach out to me. Um, because I think life is way too short not to have a whole lot of fun personally and a whole lot of fun professionally. So with that, I will say to you, thank you for being a good audience. And, and I know that we brought in some new material that perhaps you haven't thought about before. So thank you. Uh, and thank you to Eric and Jeff for inviting me to be a part of this program today. Yeah, very good. Thank you for playing. Jeff, closing thoughts on your part, sir. Um. I love the fact that you brought up how to finish a marathon. Um, Eric and I have said this before. I've run two marathons in my life, and I probably learned more in those two 26.2-mile events about life than anything else I've done. Cause, absolutely. You know, my experience was absolutely, I only have to finish this mile. I only have to finish this mile. Yeah. And I just said it 26 times. And yeah, baby steps. Work. <laughs> and, and Jeff, that's what sometimes gets people stuck, is that we've, we've got to have it all figured out and all be perfect. I know, like, before I started my company, I thought I had to have this grand master plan. It's like, no, you've got to have an idea, you've got to have a spark, you've got to have a passion, and you've got to have a first step. And then it leads you where you go. So let your experience of the marathon inspire our people on this audience today to think about what is the first step that I want to take somewhere in my life because the, the benefit of that, the lift from that, the exhilaration from that will indeed translate into your work life whether you were thinking it would or not. Great point. Yeah. Thank you. Eric, take us we, home. We, yeah, we, yeah, we did have one quick question. Um, would you be interested or willing to share the slides? Um, and if so, how would someone go about just send you an email? Send me an email and, uh, and I'd be glad send to send them. them. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, good. So anybody that's interested in the slide, just go ahead and touch base with Joe, and uh, that way he kind of knows where they're going, and who knows, you might strike up a good conversation. So um, I was so glad to see you again up in Traverse City, and yeah, it was great. get some time to connect, and uh, I'm glad that this kind of sparked a thought after I heard you speak, and I know we've got another one that we've been talking yep. about bringing you back as well. So I know we're getting a lot of positive comments that uh, says great job and uh, we're very much looking forward to having you come back and join us again later in the year or first of next year. So, Well, it was my great. pleasure and, and thank you all. Thank you to the two of you, but thanks to everybody on here today. I appreciate it. Yeah, good. Well, that concludes this week's episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays. We'll go ahead and get the recording up online as quickly as possible and encourage you to stop back there and uh, check it out, share it with friends and colleagues. If you're not following us on Facebook, certainly do that. We post our updates there as well. And uh, with, uh, with that, we'll look forward to seeing you next week and every week, as long as Jeff and I are traveling at freewebinarwednesdays.com. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.